Hello everyone and welcome back to This is the Police. The Brito is too tired he can hardly walk straight, can he go home? Yeah, alright, tightness does allow. Your father's funeral is today, can you leave me so I can go to the burial? Yeah, but come tomorrow mate, that's just what you're going to have to do. He hasn't skived off work recently so I'll let him go. But that other chap up there that's been trying to trick us, you know, he's naughty. Let's go to work. We don't want any music. We just want to go on patrol or send officers on patrol, really. Uh, the Mafia is giving us our share for the pharmaceutical cell. Let's take everything ourselves. Serial murder. Let's see here. 20 on the old Alison Bell. Okay, we need to assign two detectives over there. So we need to clear someone from another investigation that we have going on. So let's look here at our investigations. Who's working today? We can't see that from here, which is a bit annoying. They're all at home. What about drug possession here, detectives? They are working, apart from Narva. What about the double homicide over here? Yeah, they're working too, but they're pretty crap. Let's see out here with these. What do we have here? They're also quite crap, so let's see here with this one. Do we have anyone that's half decent? We've got bowling here, we'll take her off. And what more? No, close this down and then go in here on the double homicide. Actually, no, let's have a look on the homicide over here. That's been going for a while. Let's get Anthea Turner off this one. He's at home, so we won't get much results there. So we'll go ahead and we'll assign these over to the serial murderer. 21-year-old Alison Bell, City Hall intern, was brutally murdered at her apartment. We'll put Bowling Green and Turner on the case. Off they go. We now have an assault at the residential area. An obese man found himself stuck in an elevator, but when people attempted to help him out, he lashed out and began to strangle one of them. This is the third time I'm late to work, and it's all because of this fucking elevator. Well, that's no good, is it? Let's get Degas and George Best on the case. They can deal with that. It's just a man, fat man, strangling someone. It's not a murderer yet. We now have another call pretty much on the same spot with a attempt at murder. An elderly concierge reports that he saw an angry girl through the window attacking someone's car with a baseball bat yelling, Get out, you painted wretch. Come on, I know you can hear me. I will kill you myself. I don't think that's technically attempted murder. That's just destruction of property with some terroristic threats on top. We'll get David Mitchell and Mikhail Gorbachev on the case. We now already have some frames found over here. Well, that's not helpful, is it? So let's see out here. Detective Bowling fell to a violent trap set by the dentist and was declared dead on scene. Oh, well, that's just bloody annoying. After the needless death of Detective Bowling, the guys had a quick word and we decided we can't keep going on assignments like this without SWAT support. Hang on. Okay, so what's this? Hello, Jack. I suppose you don't like the dentist nickname anymore than I do. But let's just say that's who I am and let's get down to business. Uh, take a good look at the postcard I sent you. It points to a place where I hit something. Follow the clues. Keep on the trail. Let's just say there's a reason I'm giving you a chance to catch me. But don't dare share this clue with the Fet or the trail will go cold. I promise you. And hurry if I don't figure out the right place in the next 24 hours. Now, and hurry if don't figure... Okay, I promise you. And hurry. If you don't figure out the right place in the next 24 hours, I destroy all evidence and walk away. Well, let's keep it in over here. We are very good at here. So we have the evidence cart one. Uh, what's this place, perhaps? Let's see. Do we have any idea what that could be? Hello, Jack. I suppose you don't like the dentist nickname any more than I do. Okay, so that's all the same over here. Picture by... Okay, that's written out. Is there anything else over here? Let's flip it around and see if there's anything that comes to light. This may be an indication of some sort of religious place. Um, right, let's see here. Go cold. Any other in... No, I don't think there's any useful information here other than what we have. These are the frames we'll have for the investigation going. It keeps flashing over here, so why does it keep flashing? Do I need to click on some specific point? No, I don't think I can. To flip it around over here. Is there anything it's telling us that's interesting? I don't know. No, let's go back out here. And see, so that's cart number one. So let's go back out and see. Martin Stett, Chief, you've gotten yourself into a dangerous game and you can't win without evidence on the dentist. You hold in your hand a key to what happened to the victims. Look closely at the image on the card. It will help you figure out where the evidence is hidden. Send your detectives, but don't go around blindly guessing. I doubt you have the resources to go all the possible places in time. Proceed. This isn't my first rodeo. Yet yeah, proceed. 
Okay, let's open the whole thing up again here. Investigations. Serial murderer and see what we have out here. So this should tell us something about where it is. What do we have then? Okay, let's break it down and try and view this in a sort of more metaphorical standpoint. We got the people playing the trumpeters over here. Could this be the uh, ballet place theatre we've gone to before? Sophocles? Uh, over here they're standing on a roof of a building leaping up and the gods are up there. No, I don't really do metaphorical stuff. I do very concrete stuff very well. All of this is very difficult for me to figure out. But I'm guessing that there could be... I don't know what's going on here. It's just... I can't break down. I can't, you know, see through the part. Is it about what it says over here on the text? Is there anything in specific out here? H D L T I S T G D. No, that doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, what about here? Hang on, that's is that a big or small N? Let's see how do they write it. No, they write it the same way all throughout. But M is written in a different way. Is that how you're supposed to deal with this? I don't know. It's quite confusing. I sent, yeah, again, the same N. Is there anything else that stands out? A place where there might be the wrong kind of casing or anything? No, I don't think so. No, it all looks fairly recent. I mean, A's are quite large. Other than that, no. No, I've got no clue whatsoever where it could be. I mean, do we have any religious places that we can send people to? We probably have to clear people of all of their investigations, I think. What about air detectives? We've got Ziegler and Mole. We may have to just temporarily archive this investigation. So we get them available for us. What about the double homicide? Let's archive. We just want to basically prepare for the serial murder. That's the most important one. So everything we get now in terms of report on the serial murderer is on pizza places. So let's try and review what's this. Uh, Sophocles Theatre of Drama. Mr. Boyd might attempt to raise the ratings of Justice Nor fairly I was let go, but I'm getting ready to launch a new TV project, this time about the harsh everyday life of ordinary police officers. For the pilot episode, I need two cops who can ride around with several hours. We'll go around the city and the police can record various real-life stories. Your officers will be awarded $300 and you'll get a more impressive bonus. This time we do have a real budget. Well, we don't have that many coppers, but we'll get Hugh Grant and Sanu on it. And they can probably rest up or something, I don't know. Well, let's go in here now. We know that it's something to do with pizza. Uh, well, this doesn't look like pizza at all, does it? I don't have an idea. Is there anything out here? Let's try and use it in a more sort of metaphorical standpoint. Is there any of these that got holy house? I could go for this one, you know. The dentist may have hidden evidence here about the murder of Alison Bell. Well, let's get the two shit ones we have and send them off there. It's a good thing we got the SWAT team maxed out already. And now we've got an arson at the Freeburg Birth Control Union. Three people died in the blaze at the Freeburg Birth Control Union Women's Centre. We'll have to wait with that. We got a serial murderer anyway, right? They caught the offender, civilian unharmed, attempted murder. Let's see here. Boop, bidi, boop, bidi, boop. Officers unharmed. A rat among us. Officer Mitchell somehow learned about the postcard from the dentist and he saw in arms that you've been suppressing evidence. He demanded that I take action immediately or he's taken this directly to the prosecutor's office. I'm convinced him to sit on it for a couple more days, but we have to do something fast. Well, that's no good, is it? Like, that's really bad for everyone involved. I just hope that I got it right with the subject that we have out here. Derek Allen, report. Thanks for the wonderful stuff out here. I'll make a great TV series. In fact, we ran out of true stories, so we had to improvise a little. Yeah, whatever. Oh, we got 10 grand for him. Sweet. What about this? Yes! I got it right. It was the sort of bigger picture out here. So there's a small piece of evidence here. So the dentist wants to be caught by us. That's a good thing for us, I think. We caught a little bit of evidence, so we go with this one over it. No, it's either this or that. I mean, both of those got pizza on it, right? And do we have any other we can connotate with this over here? I mean, I'd be more inclined to go with this one because we have the pizza thing already and the colour schemes match up a lot better. I mean, there's a tiny bit of green over here, but there's no purple at all, so I'm doubting it's that one. Uh, so I'm going with this one being the correct frame. But we'll just let the situation develop as it is now. We now have two calls coming in here at the same time. A fraud call at the Fortune Bank. A bank employee reports that a suspicious man came into the bank. He's obviously trying to cash a forged check. The cashier also says the man is hiding something under his jacket. That could possibly be a weapon. 
we'll get George Bess and Degar on the case. And we can send out here to the theft. Michael Gibson was only away from his vegetable shop for two minutes. And someone managed to steal a big cart filled with watermelons. I bought the, that whole... What? I'm confused now. Okay, I'll read it, finish it. I brought that haul a month ago. Bright orange, much like Donald Trump. Easy to spot. The thing where he's almost £500 so they can't have gotten far. I don't understand. They bought a hauler. But is that a big cart? Is that the cart that was stolen? It must have been. I just assumed hauler meant a lorry, but probably doesn't. I'll get Mitchell out there because I want him to die for being a rat. I wouldn't be surprised if our final showdown with the dentist would be over here in this mansion because that's just inviting for action and we haven't had anything over there. So I'm guessing that's a major part of the story. I've been expecting that from day one and probably these out here. So the fortune fraud call out here. The suspect is sitting in a chair, obviously very nervous. He grows very agitated when he sees the police and starts banging his foot on the floor. Ready your gun and, show and slowly approach the suspect. Watch the suspect and rush him. Let's just wash the situation out. The man suddenly jumps up and grabs the woman standing next to him, putting a huge knife, not just a large, but a huge one, to her throat. He, he knows that the police are there for him. He knows that the police are there for him, which he's very right in assuming. Let go of the woman and get out of here. We're not here for you. That's not true, and he's not going to fall for that, I think. I know it's not your fault, let's just go down to the station and talk about this. I don't know why I thought that was a Yorkshire plate, but apparently I did. My friend, you're going to find yourself in a buddy bag, you better release that hostage quick. That should have been said by someone in a New York accent. Did it work? Oh yeah, it did. And civilians were unharmed, apart from the fact that they had a knife out to their throat. All is well. And then across the market, now across the market there's an elderly couple rolling a big blue cart filled with fruit that looks like watermelons. Hang on, was it not supposed to be Donald Trump coloured? I think it was. Interrogate the elderly couple. Hit the man with a nightclub. Hang on, yeah, we just got a whole bloody nightclub with us, you know, that whole building and that, the stage and the stripper poles and the whole thing. Uh, let's just interrogate them out here. Around the farmer's market there are three carts. One of them is orange, filled with watermelons. Three women are carrying something over a small truck. Over to a small truck, arrest a woman. Good day, ladies. Here you see anyone suspicious come through here. Perhaps some watermelon seeding scumbags. Watch until someone goes to the orange cart. Yeah, let's just watch out here and see if we get them. Oh, we did. We are good. I do feel like you should expand a bit when you've had all of that and he just jumps to this with no explanation of what happened then. It kind of just feels awkward somehow. Like we didn't get the full picture. We now have trespassing at the farm. Bill Buckler said that no less than 20 cultists have taken up residence on his farm. They claim that the house and the surrounding acreage belong to them. The Lord, the Lord, given unto this land for suffering, got us to Buckler's own morning. Yes. Okay, stop that. So I'll just continue reading that in a normal voice. According to Buckler's unwanted guests, some of the cultists are armed. Well, that's a not a good situation. We'll get those out there with a paddy wagon as well. I mean, they'll deal with it, so perfectly good with that. I don't know what we have out here. Can we assign any more investigators to this case? No, that's a case we're handling ourselves then, so we can go ahead and actually begin an investigation into this arson. Mole will get the German fire engine manufacturer and Anthea Turner on the case. I can probably also look at opening up another investigation that we had going right. Uh, the double homicide, let's actually, no, let's go for the uh, drug possession. I'll assign Anthea Turner and David Williams here to the case. Oh no, it's a Formula 1 team, sorry, it's Sir Frank Williams. Nice to see him back in action, you know. And that's the end of day 66. Right, over here we can declare bowling dead. Yeah, we need to do that so we can hire another detective. She was quite good, I even promoted her, I think. Right. So I went downstairs oh. figuring I'd find some mercenary or an escaped serial killer or some other low life I'd put away, right? But when I hit the lights, I saw a young kid. Couldn't have been 20. Skinny, dirty. Didn't even have a real weapon, just a rusty shiv. He just stood there. Didn't say anything. My whole career, I've been staring down the most dangerous people in the country, and the only one to get into my house and scare my family to death was just some kid about to crap his pants. And I pointed my gun at him, and he just stood there with his mouth open. Bad luck for him. He was pretty lucky to still be alive. And you know what? 
It was you that saved him. I think you have me confused with somebody else, Ethan. No, 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 no. Listen. All these years, me and Marla joked about how dangerous my job is. We figured that sooner or later someone would sneak into our house and cut us to pieces, yeah? Pretty dark jokes, but innocent enough. And Marla asks me not to jump into gunfights when she kisses me on the cheek before I leave for work. It's like we figured that if we joke about stuff like that, then it'll never actually happen. But, um... While I trained my gun at the kid's nose, I finally realized someone really can get into our house. Someone really can cut us to pieces. Now that it finally happened, I can't make any more jokes like that. Marla won't laugh anymore. She'll burst into tears and stay in bed all day crying, hating me more and more every second. So I figured the only way out of the situation was to show her that if someone really does dare to break into our house... He's guaranteed to get a bullet in the face. He'll die right there on the living room carpet. God, Ethan, didn't know you were so bloodthirsty. I'm telling you, Jack, I was serious about shooting this kid right there where he stood. I was about to pull the trigger. But then I remembered you. Remembered a thousand years ago we went to the lake and had some beers after an ethics lecture at the academy i was all angry with that uh, professor uh, laszlo yeah remember what he always told us being a good policeman is very simple you just need to keep doing the right thing i hated those pretentious speeches i cussed laszlo up and down and said if you always do what's right you've turned yourself into a robot and you just sat there drunk eyes staring into the distance and you were all calm and said no Ethan it's the other way around to do the right thing takes everything you got as a human <laughs> I said that oh, what an idiot I was come on Jack it's not funny when things get bad it's those moments you gotta be hopeful and, and stay human and I did just like you said I stayed human and then I slapped the cuffs on the kid in one quick move, just like Bobby Flash. Bobby Flash? What? You don't remember Evening Freeberg, the old news column? Stories about the cop hero Bobby Flash? Yeah, I heard they even published a book a few years ago. Oh, that Bobby Flash. Yeah, that Bobby Flash. How can you not remember Bobby Flash? We all argued at junior high about which one of us would be Bobby Flash when he grows up. Oh, I'm no Bobby Flash. Hero Cop would never think about shooting a terrified teenager. But wait a minute. If I'm not Bobby Flash, then maybe you are. Yeah, maybe so. We have a couple more headlines in day 67. 21 year old Alison Bell, victim of brutal murder, free brick housing construction affordable. Okay, free brick housing construction affordable, that's the headline. City Hall intern found dead in an apartment, what does this say then? City Hall really don't like us, the mafia bloody loves us. Birds of a feather flock together. Uh, anything else? No. I'm not entirely sure why City Hall is so displeased about us, but apparently they are. So what do we have here? While I was climbing up the stairs, I started feeling a little dizzy. Can I have the day off? No, you're going to have to stay in. Yes, if you're too tired, that's fine. And that's everyone at work. That's perfectly legit. So what do we have here? We've got Marlo, Moser, Wolf and Sandstrom. I should have asked the detectives to stay in, shouldn't I? Oh, well, we'll just go to the map. No, wait, I'm the only one investigating that one, ain't I? It's perfectly in control out here. Mafia, my share. Ooh, take everything, please. Change detectives. A free brick police failed to detect the appearance of a famous serial killer in the city. You have, it has become clear that your detectives simply are not up to the challenge. You have seven days to fully update your detective roster. Find some smart young faces and those other arseholes working for you. And fire! What? Find some smart young faces and those other arseholes working for you? Keep them as far away from the police station as possible. That's not how it works, mate. Yeah, all sorts of rubbish to discredit you and the Freebrick PD. We have pressure on the TV studio to close down the show. From now on, keep your chatty little monkeys off there in check. As for Sano and Grant, I want them gone by tomorrow. Well, they're not happy with us, are they? Oh! Out of attention! 
Oh, another one. Oh, that's engine again. Can we not just do that at once? You know, it's a bit cheaper. So we've now got to hire some detectives over here. So we've got Lim Kang. Oh, they're all crap, aren't they? We've got Eric Banner and we've got all of that. Well, let's hire on this guy here for B-Shift. Off they go then. They died on B-Shift, didn't they? So A-Shift has one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah. We definitely have to get some investigators to do crosswork, I think. So what about over here? Do we have anyone available other than that? No, we only have the slots we have. Other than that, no backlog over here, TV project, they want them fired, why? They haven't done anything wrong. We now have drug sales in Chinatown. An old man complained that a suspicious guy was lurking around his apartment building. He doesn't live here, I know the faces of all my neighbours. This guy is selling drugs. So let's get Gilbert and the Robins on the case. They can go out and investigate it. But what do we have in terms of other investigators out here? Let's go in and see detectives over here. We've got one, two, oh, and he's pretty decent, actually. We can go ahead then and go in. Is that the uh, detectives? That's the... Yeah, I think I know which one this is, and I'll go ahead and I'll archive it and I'll reopen it. Do we need to then go into archive? And then drug possession over here, reopen this case. And we can then assign Marlowe and Edward Sandstrom and Nala to work it. And they'll just work it permanently now. They'll get that one cracked for us, so we got that going. We now have an ADW at the city centre. A man attacked a sales girl at the flower shop when she refused to give him a bouquet of roses on credit. Eyewitnesses report that the man stopped the poor girl with a pistol and started to choke her with some packing tape. All the while, he kept yelling, I just wanted to be treated like a human. We can get Kochi, and who else can we get? We can get Gilbert out there just to go ahead and deal with it. Just a person with a gun. The ADW suspect was arrested over here. The first call about drug dealing was unfounded. It was just a man waiting for his girlfriend, which means that today is a quiet day. Would you believe it? We're having a quiet day in the police force. Yeah, I said that, right? So we now have a hostage situation at Chris G. Sands Ice Arena. An armed man wearing what looks like an explosive vest is standing next to an attraction. Attraction! I was reading that as attractive. As an attraction at the ice arena demanding that the dangerous stuff be dismantled and removed right away. Party visitors and their children are trapped on the ferris wheel and the offender is refusing to let them leave. Well, this is not good. The hostage situation was resolved peacefully. Every officer got a little bit of boost. No people were harmed and the suspect was arrested. We now have an abduction in the suburbs. We'll hold off with that until SWAT has cleared itself from its other call. The abduction call comes in here in the suburbs. Philippe Santos said that his former business partner, together with three armed accomplices, broke into his house and demanded money. Santos couldn't pay. He keeps all his cash in the bank. So they kidnapped the man's wife and their infant and took them to an abandoned house on the outskirts of the burps. They ordered him to return with the money within three hours. His name is Rafael Souza. We created the company three years ago. Business was loudy, so he blackmailed me after the first year and forced me to buy him out. For a huge sum of money, now he's found out that the business turned around and he wants even more. Oh dear, oh dear, let's get those assigned because we also have a homicide at the motel. A motel the manager saw some people dragging a limp body from one of the rooms. Now they're tearing the room apart, obviously looking for something. We'll get Nakasaki, a Khan and Jane Austen on the case over there. Our officers arrived at the abduction. A man with a gun in his hand is smoking on the porch of the abandoned house. Shoot the suspect, arrest the man and go inside and go around to the house to the back door. Well, let's get one in custody. The music inside the house is pumping loudly, so we pretty much had that guy arrested without anyone knowing about it. Got it. Three armed men are sitting at a table playing cards and the corner there's a frightened woman with a child. Pull the cord on the music player and order the men to give up their weapons. Rush the men and rush over to help the woman and the child. Let's go for the men. Immediately always go for the men, just take them out. They are the threats in that situation. The woman is not a threat, she can wait. She's an innocent party in this case. And the homicide is also coming up here. There's people shining flashlights inside the room and the voice of the perps are raised. Draw weapons and secure the room. Wait until the criminals exit on their own. This is the police, come out with their hands up. Let's use our element of surprise. 
The criminals are confused. One has a knife and the rest just have flashlights. There's a body on the floor covered in stab wound. Shoot the man holding the knife. Take aim at the armed criminal. We have you surrounded. Drop everything and reach for the sky, buddy. Reach for the sky. So everything worked out fine apart from the fact that somebody died, but we didn't kill them. The suspects did. So all is good on that front. And we are also coming up to the end of the day. All right. Now, it's been quite quiet on the dentist front. We haven't heard a thing. And over here we go. We can ask a couple of people. Let's get Marlow. And who else can we get? We can get Narva to work on it as well tomorrow. In terms of street coppers, we can get Bill Bailey and Osaki and Hutchison to work as well, just so we keep it a bit covered up and the rest can rest up and stay sorted and all that. Boyd here. And I hope you have a hell of a good reason for calling me in the middle of the night. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Boyd. I'll, I'll call you back later. No, no, wait. You're the girl from the prosecutor's office. Lana, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, I'm so embarrassed, Mr. Boyd. The first thing Mrs. Broom told me about you is that you almost never sleep. I don't sleep too much either, so I thought I'd call you and apologize for last time. <laughs> but it wasn't the last time, was it? Well, I I've been going over our conversation in my mind, and I realized how stupid I sounded. You're the chief of police, and there's a strange girl calling you, saying she'll be the next city prosecutor, just... just to share the news, I guess. I must have sounded crazy. Not so crazy as you imagine, Lana. Uh, when I learned I was going to be police chief, my parents were already dead, and my only friend was working a thousand miles away from Freeburg. Wife and kids were relaxing on a distant island in the middle of the ocean. Took me six hours to get a hold of them. But I had to share the news with someone, or I would have gone mad. All the more because I was surrounded by half a dozen cops who figured they were ahead of me for the job. I figured you were feeling about the same. It's like you're reading my mind. Now I'm like an outcast here. Most of them still think that Mrs. Broom was joking or trying to show her deputies that she's in charge of appointing her successor. But I know it's no joke. Well, for some reason, I didn't doubt it, Lana. That's probably why I'm calling you. I know it's selfish. I'm sure your wife isn't too keen on girls calling you at night. My wife and I, well, we're not living together. Maybe I'm the loneliest man in town, and that's why you called, to talk to someone even lonelier than you, huh? <laughs> Lana? You know, Mr. Boyd, maybe I'm an idiot, but until this moment, I didn't realize how lonely I am. Well, you're in luck, because now you can call me anytime. Uh, but if you do, you'll have to call me Jack. Jack? <laughs> It'll take more than one phone call to get used to that. Well, we're not in a hurry, are we? True. I fucking called it. Well, let's go ahead and end this episode right here. 